Well, I have some uh, good news. We are at 142,000. So, thank you. And I have some bad news. We're at 142,000. <laughs> we got to get to 150,000. We're going to have ushers go around one more time, take us home. And to take us home, we have our friend uh, to give us the benediction. He is retiring this year from All Saints Episcopal Church in Pasadena. We are sad to see him go, but I am sure he will remain an integral part of our community. Give a warm welcome for our friend, our brother, Reverend Ed Bacon. Assalamu alaikum. I am a Muslim Christian. <laughs> you are not only my friends, you are my sisters and brothers. It's a night about narratives. Very, very quickly. The story is that I would not be who I am if it were not for the Muslim Public Affairs Council. When my wife and I moved to Pasadena six years before 9-11, I inherited a rich array of friendships that were interfaith in nature. Dr. Hassan Hattud and his family, Dr. Maher Hattud and his family, my dear friend Nazir Kaja, and Salam and Leila Al Mariadi and their children. And at every turn, our relationship has gotten deeper and deeper. Right after 9 11, we all gathered on Vermont at the mosque to pray. And soon after that, we were gathered at the USC mosque. And I heard one of the most important things I have ever heard in all of my life. And the mom said that night, to be religious in the 21st century is to be interreligious. That became a mantra for me in my sermons at All Saints Episcopal Church. So, it became important for the Quran to be read in the services at All Saints Church, particularly on Christmas Eve. It became important for Muslim friends to be with us in worship. So when MPAC asked to meet and have this December annual gathering at All Saints Church, we didn't think a second about it. We said, yes, and there you were. And we got in trouble together. It was delightful. It was holy. It was glorious. In October of this year, we were called by the Interfaith Refugee Resettlement Services here in Los Angeles. And they said, we have a Syrian refugee family coming into our midst, and we need a welcoming church to meet them to set up their apartment, to get them started. All saints, we want you to do it, but you have to make the decision in four days. Why so quickly? Because the mother is pregnant and she must leave the refugee camp in Jordan in order to get situated in Los Angeles before the birth of her child. We thought about it for a second and we said yes. This wonderful Sunni Muslim family came into our life, and the very next day was the terrorist attack in Paris. And the ugly, bigoted, anti-refugee energy got unleashed in the presidential election process here in this country. We stood and said, that is unfair, it is unthinking, it is fear-based. 
And so I drove here tonight from Ontario where the diocesan Episcopal Church was gathered and we passed a resolution condemning all bigotry against refugees, asking that the President and Congress open the doors of this country to receive more and more and more refugees. My point is that would not have happened had it not been for MPAC. You have made a difference in my church, helping it become an interfaith Christian church. We look at the Bible from the interfaith perspective. We look at Jesus from the interfaith perspective. We look at all of life from the interfaith perspective. And we know that everybody must do their interfaith work. Now, I believe that we have a choice in life, whether we're going to live in the house of fear or the house of love. When you live in the house of fear, it takes your brain off of its thinking mechanism, and it makes you act just as a fight or flight mechanism. But when you live in the house of love, your brain operates at its highest capacity of creativity and innovation. I love impact because you are dedicated to living in the house of love, not the house of fear. Now, I'm retiring, and my wife and I are moving back to the South. I grew up in Georgia and had service in six years in Mississippi and moved here. Our grandchildren live in Birmingham, Alabama. I think that $140,000 is just too little. You all need to come up with $200,000 tonight. <laughs> it's a simple answer. The money is in your purses, it's in your wallets, and it is in your bank account. All you have to do is transfer it over to MPAC. <laughs> and I think that if you go there, then I can continue to have conversations with Salam al Mariati, and we can start having MPAC banquets in Birmingham, Alabama, <laughs> so that we can transform the South into an interfaith phenomenon. So all you have to do is give, my friends. Give till you feel it. And you'll be able to sleep so well tonight, I promise you. Now, if you'll allow me to pray. Oh, God, you are always greater greater than everything, greater than every one, greater than every fear. When we are rooted and grounded in you, we are rooted and grounded in our unity. For in you, we are already one. Help us to live in your love so that with courage and audacity and bravery, we can show the world how to transform the human race into the human family. Amen.